Oh, happy days. How's everybody tonight? It's a good night to die. <laughs> yes. You feel the heat tonight? Praise God. Remember, we're supposed to be flames of fire. We exchanged it, right? We exchanged the flame for the fresh fire. Everybody should be cooking tonight. <laughs> <sighs> Glory. Hallelujah. You know, uh, we have been talking, especially in the time and season that we're in, about the areas of allowing faith to reign, which is essential for each and every one of us. Faith is reigning. It should be the highest level in us. Is faith reigning in your life? And then remember last time we gathered together, uh, the vision came forth to where the Lord was uh, trimming the wicks and releasing more oil. Amen? So that his children could become that flame of fire. And I can tell you, remember, God is bringing the body of Christ through deliverance right now. The whole body is going through deliverance. Because he's getting ready to release something powerful. And he can't release it to the kids that he can't trust. So he's bringing the whole body through deliverance. And tonight we saw the swords coming. Bam, bam. And I saw the sword of the Lord just whew, coming through and cutting loose. That's a part of this deliverance. It's a part of the freedom. The problem people are having is they just won't let go. They keep trusting in themselves. They keep living by their own feelings. Their eyes are more on them than they are on God. The word says that you and I died. Hello? It says, the word says the Lord is excited. He desires the death of his children. That means you got to die to yourself. Isn't that the way it is? Isn't that the rule? Deny yourself, pick up the cross and follow. See, if you can't deny yourself, there's no way you're going to win. Because you can't fight without denying yourself because your flesh cannot beat the powers of darkness. So one of the things the Lord is doing is bringing the body through deliverance. Why? Because there's too much flesh. There's too much self. There's too much selfish desires. There's too much greed. There's too much. And he says, I'm bringing it right through. I'm bringing it through deliverance. That means that the fire is coming. Conviction's coming, and he's going to push every button in each and every one to stir up something so it can be removed. Hello. Romans 8. Glory to God. <laughs> Romans 8, conquering the flesh. <laughs> Verse 1. Whew. Did you cross over tonight? See, the flesh can't cross over. So if you're still connected to the flesh and not separated, you ain't crossing over then you can't change. Then you can't get peace. See, no demon can cross over. <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 1, let's speak it together. There is therefore no, no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. No condemnation. In other words, condemnation is a representation of to be condemned. And who condemns you? The enemy, right? So what is he saying? There's no condemnation. No open doors to the enemy. No open doors to the enemy. So he says something very powerful. There's no, now there's no condemnation to those who are one. In Christ Jesus. Now. He talks about everybody. He's saying those who are supposedly believers. Who do not walk according to the what? Flesh. So there's no condemnation to those who are not walking according to the flesh, there's no open door to the enemy. 
right? He says, but according to the what? Spirit. So if you're in Christ Jesus, you're a Christian, so, you know. But you're still walking in the flesh and allowing your flesh to live without crucifying it and killing it every day. That's an open door. You will be condemned. You'll be pressed. You'll be tormented by the powers of darkness. It is their legal right. They have access to the flesh. Does everybody get it? Not to the spirit, but to the flesh. Hallelujah. Now, being filled with the spirit is associated with those who are in Christ, meaning in the anointing. So to those who are filled with the Spirit of God and the anointing of Christ, there is no condemnation. So what the enemy likes to do is promote isolation. Amen? Isolation. See, you can still come to service and still be isolated. Because you're still about you and you can't press over. That's cause and isolation. The isolation is the area in the relationship with the Lord and the presence of God. There's the relationship. That's why we gather together because there's more power together so we can cross over. Amen? But the enemy promotes isolation. Desires of isolation. People don't even know they have a desire to isolate because that's your flesh's desire. Amen? Okay, verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in it that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On account of sin, he condemned the sin in the flesh. That the righteous requirement, so there is a requirement, isn't there? Of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh. So if you're walking according to the flesh, can you fulfill the requirement? No. That means the enemy has access to you. Legal access to you. But according to the Spirit. Verse 5. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the world, the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. So let me ask you a simple question. The more you're in God's presence, are you going to think more of the flesh or more of the Spirit? Mm -hmm. For to be carnal minded is what? Death. It sure didn't say peace and joy, did it? To be carnal minded is torment. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace because the carnal mind, the flesh, is enmity. It hates the presence of God. It's enmity against God. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. So your flesh is never going to submit to God. Never. But it will submit to the devil. Because it's its offspring. Amen? Hallelujah. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. See, unless you're filled with the Spirit of God, you don't know whether you're pleasing Him or not. Because if you're in the flesh, you're so busy battling for yourself. You're not battling for the presence of God. And you get really drained and worn out. And the enemy just pounds you. Pounds you, pounds you, pounds you. Convinces you. Next thing you know, you don't even have the mind of Christ. You have the mind of carnality, the flesh mind. And the flesh is now conquering you. And you're no longer conquering the flesh. Is everybody okay? So they set their minds on selfish desires. But have forms of godliness. But there's no power. You know, become very religious. Jesus conquered the flesh in the flesh, in the physical realm. Why? So you and I could conquer the flesh in the spirit. You cannot conquer the flesh in the physical realm, in the flesh. Only way you're going to conquer the flesh is being in the spirit. Is everybody okay? 
of course, that means being in the anointing. Being in the anointing. Galatians 5. Hallelujah. Galatians 5, verse 16. It's a good reminder tonight. Conquering the flesh. What are you actually conquering in the flesh? You know, it's just not about, con it's about conquering the emotional attachments in the flesh. Amen? Because there's so much attachment to the flesh. So when you begin to allow the flesh to access or reign in any part of you, there's a bunch of emotional attachments there that reattach to you. And then you go into a woe was me state, even oppression. And then you get angry with God. But God didn't do it. You did it. We did it. What? Listen, nothing happens to you unless you allow it. <laughs> you can't blame nobody else for how you are or how I am. Amen. <laughs> I can't blame my wife. Adam tried that and the Lord laughed at him. <laughs> Eve tried to blame the serpent and he laughed at her too. <laughs> anyway, everything that comes to you is what you've allowed. Amen. Why? Because he's given us the guideline to conquer. He's given us the weapons. He's given us everything to overcome. But unless you're using them, you will not overcome. Unless you every day hashtag walk away from you. That is the life. We want to walk away from ourselves And put a guard over your mouth. Hello. Verse 16. Let's speak it. Galatians 5, verse 16. Is everybody there? <clears throat> I say then, walk in the Spirit, or in the anointing, and you will not what? Fulfill the lust. That means the desires or emotional attachments of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one another. So you don't do the things that you wish or you desire in the flesh. But if you're led by the Spirit, you're not under the law, which is the Law of death and sin. Now the works of the flesh, or the evidence of the flesh, are evident, which are what? Adultery. People don't realize adultery is having worshiping idols. Worshiping idols. What can be an idol? You. How about your possessions? How about your talents? How about your abilities? How about your finances, your bank accounts, your past successes? Those can be idols in people's life. That's adultery. Those will sever and distance yourself from the presence of God. It'll be a long distance relationship, not close. That's why the body is going through deliverance. Why? Because there's so many idols in the body, it's ridiculous. People have forsaken their first love, him. You know, God blesses. He loves us to prosper. Then people begin to worship their prosperity. They take more time on those things than they do in his presence. There's no warfare no more. Everybody okay? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now the works of the flesh are evidence which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, same, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, and revelries. How about unforgiveness? How about bitterness? The, all of those things that are associated with the flesh. How about offense? Oh man, that's the big one. When people are in the flesh, they're easily offended. Easily offended. That's one of the things the enemy tries to do. Look at if he can promote and provoke you to get in the flesh, you react and not respond. He's got access. And then he waits because if you don't take care of it, he's going to invite the other ones in. 
And don't tell me, I don't care how long you've been a Christian, that you can't have a demon. Those are demons. And they will come right in. First thing that comes is a familiar spirit. Then the rest start coming. Because the one likes to pretend he's a Holy Spirit, but he isn't. He always tries to comfort you in an area, but it's false comfort. It's not the true comforter. It's a false comforter. But don't worry about it. Listen, if the, you don't hear repent, it ain't God. Amen? You hear, oh, it's going to be okay. That ain't the Holy Ghost. Not when there's sin involved. Not when there's idolatry involved. He says, repent. Why? Because he wants to access because the blood goes before the Spirit. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. But let's go further. But if you are led by the Spirit, you're not under law, right? Now, and it says here in verse 21, Envy, murder, drunkenness, revelries, the like, which I tell you beforehand that I also told you in time past that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now that's pretty wild, isn't it? There's a lot of people when they get before the throne who are not getting in. That's why God's bringing his children through deliverance. It says he's coming back for a blemish-free bride. It goes back to the beginning. So if you're a Christian and you're in the flesh, are you getting in? No. That blows the theology at once saved, always saved, doesn't it? And that's crazy. I, I, I just, it just baffles me. It baffles me in there. Again, what is the problem? Lack of presence, lack of crossover. Listen, you and I came from the presence of God. That's what our desire is. But the enemy will put everything else involved to, re, to try to reconnect us to a different desire to move us further and further away from the presence of God and get more and more isolated. Hallelujah. Glory. So what is this then? Okay, so those who are led by the Spirit, it says in verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, faithfulness, faithfulness, full of faith, gentleness, self-control. Against these things, there's no law. There's no open doors for the enemy. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Those who are walking in the anointing have crucified the flesh. If we live in the Spirit or live in the anointing, let us also walk in it. And let us not become conceited, provoking one another or envying one another. Why? Because it'll open the door again to the flesh. Amen? Works. These are, look at The flesh is the works of the old man character. It's his character. Unforgiveness, offense, bitterness, all promoting. And what's it promoted by? Pride. Pride. Remember, pride is the protector of this self-character. Is the protector of the flesh. Everyone say it. Pride is the protector of the flesh. Remember, the flesh is the offspring of the good and evil tree. Amen? Amen. <laughs> It's of darkness. In First Peter chapter 5. First Pete 5. Verse 5. Conquering the flesh. Can you conquer the flesh in the flesh? No. What protects the flesh? Pride. Verse 5, let's speak in. Likewise, you younger people, you're less mature. It's got nothing to do with age. Submit yourselves to your elders, those that are more mature. Yes, all of you be submissive one another or respect one another. And be clothed with humility. For God resists the what? The proud. But gives grace to the humble. Therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Now you've got to remember the grace here is a plan of escape. Amen? It's a plan of escape. So he says, look, God's going to resist your escape. 
He's going to resist assisting you in escape because you're prideful. Until you humble yourself, repent, and turn, then he gives the grace or the plan of escape to you. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you, promote you, prosper you in due time. Casting your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober. What's sober mean? Alert. Be vigilant, which means consistent. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may what? Devour. It says, resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. So you're not the only one going through that. Even when the enemy tells you, you're the only one. <laughs> but may the God of all grace, of all escape, plan of escape, who called us to eternal glory by Christ Jesus after you suffered a while. That suffering is called trials, tribulations. <laughs> there are challenges and temptations. And what are they for? To expose the enemy of bondage. Amen? That's protected by pride. Everything you're going through is exposed. What is it? To, uh, everything. And when you try to protect something that, the God, that God is trying to expose, it's because pride is protecting it. Somebody get it. Oh, and after you've suffered a while, God will perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you in all things. Remember, God resists or holds his presence from the prideful. They are unable to cooperate with the plan of escape. He says, be alert, alert and consistent. And remember, sufferings are the trials and challenges and temptations to expose your enemy of bondages protected by pride. Remember, ply, pride blinds. Amen? Pride blinds. And, and what's it trying to blind? Corrupt of sin or the presence of evil. Remember, sin is the presence of evil. So he wants to blind us the, from these things. So while God is bringing us through the process of deliverance, don't hold back. Goodness. Whatever it is that's irritating you, something's there. Whatever you're trying to protect, I ain't got that. Oh, yes, you do. Because if you're not willing to submit and look, you got it. Hello. <laughs> Mark 1. Glory. Mark 1 should be Mach 1. <laughs> Warp 1. <laughs> Whew, you got hot in here. Worthy is your name. Verse 9. Verse 9. Hallelujah. Everybody okay? Are you getting this? Yeah, man. Give me a lot of cooking flesh tonight. <laughs> sweet smelling aroma to God <laughs> he loves the death of his saints <laughs> oh they're going to eat good tonight up there <laughs> hallelujah verse 9 it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan and immediately coming up from the water he saw the heavens parting and the Spirit descending upon him like a dove. In other words, the anointing came. Amen. Then a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Immediately the Spirit drove him into the wilderness. Now I want you to grab something. The anointing came and immediately the, the Holy Spirit drove him. Drove him. Does everybody get it? And he didn't physically drive him and drop him off. Amen. He drove him into the spirit. And into the wilderness. 
and while he was in the wilderness, amen, and then, uh, and immediately coming up from the water, okay, and then drove him, immediately the spirit drove him, and he was there in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan, and was with the wild beasts, and the angels ministered to him. Now, the anointing came, filling him with the spirit, amen, the dove came upon him, and then he went right into battle. Does everybody get it? The spirit drove him, what? To conquer every temptation from the devil. Does everybody get this? But he didn't do it without the what? The anointing. Hello. So if you think you're going to overcome, conquer the flesh, or overcome any presence of evil without the anointing, you are deceived. And that's what he wants you to do. Get you in the flesh. Because you won't win. Matthew 21. Matthew 21, 12. Let's speak it. Then Jesus went into the temple of God and did what did he do? He drove out all those who bought and sold in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. And he said to them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. Now, he drove out out of the temple thieves that steal your identity. You now you've got to look spiritually because this is the temple he's talking about. He went into a physical temple, but now he's coming into the, his temples. And he's driving out the thieves. Why? The first thing they come to steal is your identity. And then what did he do? Then when he came in, into the temple and... Uh, I mean, where am I? Uh, okay, he drove them out. <laughs> Okay, uh, then, oh, verse 14. It says, then the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. So again, the Lord is bringing the body through deliverance. What's he doing? He's driving out, out of these temples, the thieves that bring, that steal your identity, and it's returning sight, amen, to the many. And, and then and they began to praise him and worship him. And he's giving them a new song. Again, the Lord allows the triggers or your, your buttons to be pushed to empty all the slots of corruptible seeds. It's like a candy machine. Did you ever go to a vending machine? You put the money in, you push the button, and they got all these slots. He's going to push that button until there's no more candy in that slot and there's about seven slots you mean I'm going through all this stuff because he's trying to empty me and fill me with him yes see everything will work to the good amen see you will cooperate better in his presence go ahead Lord do it do me do whatever you want see there's no rebellion in that when he's bringing you through these things in fact, there's honor and respect. Thank you, Lord, for exposing me. Amen? Remember when the Santa said, slap me in the head, you know? Let the righteous slap me. Somebody kick me. Somebody do something. Allow me to see so I can be free. Everybody wants freedom but not willing to go through it. There is no drive through anymore, okay? Even though I've seen drive through churches. I mean, some of them are still drive through churches even when you go there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Two songs, take your donation and no crossover, no crossover, none. God is raising up warriors, not pew warmers. Amen. Hallelujah. Acts 10. He is changing lives. The old traditions and the old ways have to go. Acts 10.37 You cannot live in the outer court any longer. You'll get wiped out. You'll get sucked out. 
You must live in the holy and the most holy place. Hallelujah. Verse 37. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. That word you know which was proclaimed throughout all Judea began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. How Jesus anoint, or how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with what? Power. That's called the anointing. Who went about doing good and healing all who were what? Oppressed by the devil for God was with him. See the enemy oppresses you with everything. Anything that he attaches you to it oppresses you. I don't care if it's sickness, disease, and look at you can feel like crap and still love God. Does everybody understand it? And still be joyful. Even though you feel like garbage. Because you don't allow your feelings to lead you. You let the Spirit lead you. Amen? Listen, you can have a flu virus. It doesn't matter what you got. And still feel great. I mean, why? Because you're in His presence. Joy, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen? So the enemy always wants to steal your joy. Anoint, he anointed Jesus through the Holy Spirit and power to drive out those oppressed by a demon presence. Because that's what it was. Amen? Mark 16. That's why every day we examine ourselves. Every day we should, listen, after you've gone through deliverance, you should be delivering yourself every day. You know, we, one time we had a visitor at our house and uh, they wanted to, you know, learn more and being more involved and stuff and they'd already gone through a deliverance one time years ago and so he said you know we want to bring you through deliverance so you can learn oh I don't need deliverance oh that just told me you do you do big time <laughs> I don't need deliverance oh, what was that I've been through deliverance whoa snap it you better do this deliverance prayer right now. See, that's a protector, isn't it? And see, fear comes up because the demon doesn't want to be exposed. So fear, remember, fear protects pride. <laughs> and pride protects the flesh, the old man. I don't need deliverance. Oh, I've been through it. Oh, man, you do. Big time. It's there. What are you afraid of going through deliverance for? Fear is not of God. Hallelujah. Mark 16, 14. Later he appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table and he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of the heart because they did not believe those who had seen him afterward he was risen. And he said to them, go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes, which means follows, is baptized, and baptized is saved. But he who does not follow is condemned. And these signs will follow those who follow. In my name they will do what? That's the first thing he talks about. The first thing. They will drive out demons. Listen, if you can't drive them out of yourself, you ain't driving them out of no one else. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And they will speak with new tongues. That means they've been baptized in the Holy Spirit with power and the anointing. And they will take up serpents and they will drink anything deadly. But of course, you don't go tempt God, right? And they will by no means hurt them. And they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. And they will what? Recover. He rebuked them for not following the spirit of truth. <clears throat> Cast out or drive out evil presence of demons. Again, of yourself. Praying in the Holy Spirit in a heavenly language of tongues. Conquering all traps of the enemy. Laying hands on the sick. <laughs> because your hands are clean. But you can't lay hands on the sick if your hands are dirty. Amen. You'll be, you'll be passing that on to somebody else. 
Pride is unclean. Rebellion is unclean. There's no power there. Psalm 51. Psalm 51. Conquering the flesh. <clears throat> Verse 1, let's speak it. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Blot out my acts of sin, or acts of the presence of evil called transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, that's curses, and cleanse me from my sin, which is the presence of evil. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is always before. In other words, the presence of evil is always there. I have to always overcome it. Against you alone have I sinned and done this evil in your sight, that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity. In other words, we were born with a curse. And in sin my mother conceived me. Why? Because we are the offspring of darkness. Behold, you desire truth where? In your inward parts, in your members, in your heart, and in the hidden part, you will make me to know what? Wisdom. Purge me with hyssops, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear the joy of gladness, that the bones you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all of my iniquities. Create in me a what? Clean heart, O oh God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me, and do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. That's so powerful. Powerful. In your, in, see, if you can't be honest with yourself, you can't be honest with God. 2 Corinthians 4. It's a prayer for deliverance. One of them anyways. You know, if people would pray the prayer booklet, they'd be freer off if they'd use that booklet more. Instead of going to the phone, they might go to that booklet. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 4. In verse 7, 2 Corinthians 4, 7. Is everybody there? Anybody there? Hallelujah. <clears throat> Let's speak it. Verse 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying about in the body of the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So then death is working in us, but life in you. And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believe, therefore I spoke, we also believe, therefore spoke, knowing that what? He who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that grace having spread through the many may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not what? We don't lose heart. We don't give up. We don't quit. We are consistent. We're alert. We press in. Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, hallelujah. Yet the inward man is being renewed day by day, being strengthened. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, for some of us a little bit longer, is working for us a far more exceeding eternal weight of glory. Listen, you don't have to make it any longer. Just do the right thing. 
Well, we do not look at the things which are seen. That's the problem. Amen. But that the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are what? Eternal. We are all hard pressed, especially in this time and season right now. I mean, it's everywhere. Oppression is heavy. The attacks of the enemy are going crazy. We got to remember, it's, it's like a, a, an animal that has been injured. You can't get near that thing. It's vicious. It doesn't trust anyone. This is what's going on in the powers of darkness. Why? Because the more they're being exposed, the more vicious they become. And they're being exposed everywhere. I don't know if you saw it. It wasn't on the news. It was on the, I don't know what it was on. It was on um, Bitchute or Parlor. And um, it was in the, the Middle East. And what they call the White Hats, which is the righteous military, rescued. You know what a, a tanker is, you know, full of gas? Well, it was emptied and full of women and children. Two-year-olds, babies. It was devastating, I'm telling you. They were pulling them out of this little hole that they filled the thing up with. It was about a two-foot hole. And they're pulling two-year-olds out and babies and women and, and Muslim women and everything. The place was filled. It was packed. They were laying on one another inside. They were cleaning them up and wiping them off when they were coming out. I don't know how many were there, but man, it broke my heart. But also I did rejoice because I know God is answering prayer. It's all over the world. If people understood how evil, evil really is and what's really going on, they wouldn't be so concerned about their own life. They'd be more interested in how to help and rescue. Listen, you rescue by prayer. Everything is done by warfare. That wouldn't have happened without warfare. Amen? Amen? Because God sends them out then. Those who are there in position and ready, he sends them out. But it was the military that rescued these kids and these women. Hallelujah. Hebrews 10. In verse 19. Hebrews 10, verse 19. Let's speak it. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest, the most holy, by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he consecrated for us. That means we must be sanctified unto him. Through the veil that is his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who has promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. Not what? Forsaken the assembly of ourselves together as the manner of some. But exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Again, entering a holy the Holy of Holies by worship. Amen? Getting anointed by the crossover so that you can conquer your old man of selfish desires, lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. Listen, you can't conquer without crossing over. That's where the anointing is released. Romans 8.18 Conquering the flesh. Conquering the flesh of its emotional desires. Romans 8.18, 8, let's speak it together. For I consider the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be what? Revealed where? In us. Wait a minute. When he says us, does he mean those who are in the anointing and spirit-filled or those who are in the flesh? In the anointing and spirit-filled, yes. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God, which means we're led by the Spirit. For the creation was subjected to fertility not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of what? Corruption. 
and to the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that while the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs to, uh, together until now, not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption or redemption of our new bodies. For we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? If we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with what? Perseverance or what? Endurance. How many of y'all know we need endurance? Especially now. I'm going to close in 2 Corinthians 5. Second Corinthians five. <clears throat> we want to live from the future to the present, not from the past to the present. Amen. If you live from the past to the present, you're in the flesh. So, may, so many people spend more time trying to fix their past. That means that they can't go into the present, into the future. If you let go of the past and you're living from the future to the present, God fixes all that. You don't have to. Hallelujah. Quit fixing yourself. <laughs> Hallelujah. And verse 1. 2 Corinthians 5.1 For we know that if our earthly house, this tent, is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan eagerly, desiring to be clothed with our habitation, which is from heaven. <laughs> yes. If indeed, having been clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we who are in this tent groan, being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but further clothed, that mortality may be swallowed up by life. Now he who has prepared us for this very thing is God, and this is what's happening now, who also has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. So we are always confident knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, yes, well pleased, rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Therefore, we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be what? Well-pleasing to him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are well known to God, and I also trust are well known in your consciences. Hmm. For we do not commend ourselves again to you, but give you opportunity to boast on our behalf that you may have an answer for those who boast in the appearance and not in heart. Oh, there's a lot like the boast in appearance, but not in heart. <laughs> for if we are besides ourselves, it is for God. And if we are of sound mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ compels us because we judge thus that if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we've known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, in the anointing, he's a new creation. Behold, all things have become new, but what? Old things have passed away. So in the process and the anointing, what is trying to come back to you cannot connect to you from the old. Only if you allow it. Once you touch and agree with it, you've turned your back on the Lord. Does everybody understand? And now there begins a separation and you've opened the door. You've opened the door to the enemy and the flesh becomes activated again. Does everybody get it? We want, again, we do not want to activate the flesh. We want to conquer the flesh. Amen? But you can't conquer it in the flesh. You can only conquer it in the spirit. So don't let the enemy deceive you. Amen? 
Don't let them manipulate you. And don't let them false comfort you. <laughs> Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask, Lord, that the word that has been imparted in us tonight will grow and bear fruit for your glory and penetrate every part of our being that we may stay filled with your spirit, living from the future, not from the past, and being connected to your glory in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.